Let's do a classic physics experiment called the Rubens Tube. Now, I really want to bring it down, but it involves open flames, and some people have issues with open flames. So, what we have here is a length of PVC pipe. It has about 100 or so holes drilled at half-inch increments. It has some foil tape to keep it from melting. On this side, we've got a two-inch speaker matching the diameter of the two-inch tube. On that side, we've got some lab tubing leading to some propane. So let's fire it up and see what it does. All right, as you can see, we got some nice standing planes, a little bit of oscillation from the vibrations in the hose. Let's throw some sound in there, see what happens. Let's start with a 449 hertz frequency. As you can see, this sets up a standing wave, and we can see, well, the emerging sign curve that represents sound. What happens here is we're having the sound compression here and not compressing here. The lower pressure here allows more gas to escape into the atmosphere, shaping the sound curve. Now, if we change the frequency, we can see each time we set up a standing wave, we get that sine curve. Higher the frequency, the more waves. Now, let's throw some music at this. How about some Dave Rubeck? Now we have real life sound visualization with five. The day direct isn't uh, terribly energetic, so let's try something uh, a little more energetic. And that's a Rubens tube. We now look at the work of Dr. Tizian Konchizen, a Chinese scientist whose work has been picked up and analyzed by Russian scientists. What he found was a DNA transformation that was through nothing more than a wave itself. As you see in this diagram, you have number four being a duck and number six being a chicken. Of course, they're not anatomically correct. It's a very simple diagram. But what you're looking at is that the duck, number four, is inside a pentagonal room, a five-sided room. All the number twos that you see in this diagram represent funnels in which air can pass through and also energy could pass through. Then, after the funnels, you see those orange lines which actually represent copper pipes that go from the funnel to the other room where the pregnant chicken is being held. Now, the pregnant chicken is very important because there's eggs that are developing inside the chicken's womb. What you see with number three is a microwave generator. Now, this was not a lethal dose of microwaves. He didn't kill the duck, but he did excite the duck's DNA with microwave energy. Now, what happened was really phenomenal because as the duck's DNA was being excited, those energy patterns went over into the room with the chicken. Now, let's look briefly at this image of a duck. You can see that the duck has a long beak. It has a long neck. It has large internal organs. And if you look down at the feet, you can clearly see that there's webbing between the toes. When we look at this picture of a chicken, you can see the chicken's beak is much shorter. You can see there's no webbing between the toes. And in fact, the length of the neck is much shorter. Now, it was a synchronicity. It just so happened that I was looking for these pictures online. And when I found this picture of the chicken, it happened to be a chicken who was raising ducks. Now, of course, when the eggs hatched, they didn't look exactly like ducks. But what they did look like was really phenomenal. As you see in the next picture, 
There's webbing on the feet, and in fact, they were called duck hens. The webbing grew on feet of eggs that were laid from a chicken. Chicken feet don't have webbing. Chicken feet are supposed to have naked toes. And as you look in this next image, you can clearly see that the head of the duck hen looks more like a duck than it does like a chicken. In fact, we have some very specific statistics we can look at here in which 500 eggs were zapped through the chicken. Of those 500 chicken eggs that were zapped, 480 of them actually hatched. 80% of the eggs that hatched had a flat duck-shaped head as they developed. 90% had a shift in the position of the eyes where the eye actually moved back on the skull to the position it normally would be on the head of a duck. And 25% of them actually had webbing that grew between the toes. This is phenomenal because what it shows is that the genetic material of the chicken was spontaneously rewritten inside the womb so that when those eggs laid, they became half duck, half chicken creatures. That completely bypasses traditional Darwinian models of evolution. So you see how it is totally possible to explain evolution that has occurred on the Earth as being existing more primitive species that are energetically rewritten into more complex forms of life later on. Well, we can also look to the work of Dr. Peter Garyev, who took this even a step further. And what he did is to take eggs that had been laid by a frog and then zap them with a laser light that had gone through eggs laid from a salamander. Now, a salamander is considered a more primitive form of life than a frog. One of the unique qualities of a salamander is that you can cut off one of his limbs and the limb will actually regrow. The salamander has the power of regeneration, whereas the frog does not. So in this sense, you could almost say that it dialed the DNA backwards in evolution a bit. Because what happened when you redirect laser light through a salamander's embryos into a frog egg is that the frog egg has a complete metamorphosis and what comes out is a fully healthy salamander, not a frog. Now this is a scientific revolution in the making because it suggests that you can have a complete transformation from one species to another within one generation. Your parent could be one creature, you lay the egg, the egg develops into a completely different creature, and the only thing that you need to make that transition possible is the actual wave information that rewrites the DNA. It's almost as if DNA is like a jigsaw puzzle that has more than one solution. And this really changes how we see life and how we see evolution. It could very well be the engine of evolution. For if, again, you look back to the fossil record, as I said before, Dr. James Rope and Dr. David Sepkoski, two paleontologists from the University of Chicago, analyzed marine fossils, over 3,600 different genres of life that emerged in the various layers of fossils from the ocean. What they found over and over again was that there was a 26 million year cycle in the way that life was evolving in the Earth. This 26 million year cycle goes back, as you can see here, some 250 million years into the past, and it includes the fall of the dinosaurs. So how could something like this be possible? How could all creatures on Earth be spontaneously changing in even intervals of time? Well, the scientists really don't know what to make of this. And it got even stranger when there was yet another cycle that was discovered by doctors Robert Mueller and Robert Rode, which in this case is 62 million years long, as you can see in this diagram. And this cycle goes all the way back to the original single-celled organisms found in our fossil record 542 million years ago. In nice, even intervals of 62 million years, the creatures on Earth spontaneously evolve from one form to another. And that, to me, is proof positive that what we're dealing with is galactic energy waves. Galactic energy waves are the only plausible explanation for how you could have even cycles of time. What I'm suggesting is that there are evenly spaced waves of energy in the galaxy and that those waves of energy 
are moving away from the center at a nice steady speed. So if they're always the same length and they're moving at a steady speed, that means that the cycles that they will create will be equal in time. And in fact, we can actually look out at the galaxy and see that galactic bioenergy fields may indeed be responsible for causing this 62 million year and 26 million year evolutionary cycle. Now look at this. In this diagram you see the redshift variations in the supercluster of galaxies known as Virgo. What do I mean by redshift variations? Redshift is a microwave frequency that is given off by all objects in the cosmos. Most scientists interpret redshift as being indicative of how far away something is. But Dr. William Tift upended this whole scientific orthodoxy by finding that within a single galaxy, redshift starts changing in even intervals. And those intervals look like layers in an onion, meaning that the highest redshift is at the center of the galaxy and then in evenly spaced orbits away from the center the microwave frequencies of light that all the stars are giving off have changes in their frequency that are very measurable. Now, you can see it in this image from the Virgo cluster, and you can also see it in this next image, which is taken from other areas in the Virgo cluster. Dr. Tift's studies have looked at hundreds and hundreds of galaxies. Between him and other graduate students who have investigated this, they have yet to find a single galaxy that does not have these striations within it where you see varying microwave frequencies. But we are surrounded by dimensions. We can't see them because they're vibrating at different frequencies. There are cities there, there are peoples there. I think this is where the different time zones are, the past, the future. They're all vibrating at different frequencies. And the aliens know how to go back and forth in these frequencies. This is the way they travel. They don't travel so much with uh, fuel. As some of the other investigators used to give me a hard time, they wanted to know what kind of fuel do we have to have to go from here to the next star out there? And how many yield the uh, speed of light? They said it's not done that way. The UFOs are held by thought. It can be the group thought of everybody on the craft or the individual thought. They have crystals on board the craft and the energy is stored in these crystals. And this is what propels them. And when they want to travel from one place to another, 
they change the vibration of their frequency. They speed it up. And when they speed it up, they will go into the other dimension. Some people have seen UFOs in the sky at night. They'll suddenly flash and disappear. And other ones will see one suddenly flash in. That's because they are changing the frequency, the vibration of the ship, and are hitting that a wall where the two dimensions clash, and they suddenly are over in the other dimension. Just like Star Trek, and when you see whenever they go into Mach 1, they suddenly just dis disappear. And I'm beginning to think that all of these time dimensions in the past are existing in the same way as a frequency, as a dimension. And when we were talking to Nostradamus, we were able to tune in on that frequency and communicate like having a telephone. And it is some way, it's like turn tuning a, uh, a radio or a television. Somehow we were able to communicate across time. They are doing the same thing. And this is why they are aware of everything that's happening. The most important thing of all, especially right now, is to get rid of all this old karma. We're going to go into something that's very important. We're going into a new world, a new earth. You can't drag this karma with you. The new earth is going to be beautiful and perfect and positive. There's no room for negative karma. You've got to get rid of it. And that's when I'm, when I'm working with my clients, we discuss these things. What is the quickest but not the easiest way to get rid of karma? Do you know? Some people say, do it back to them. That doesn't do anything but keep perpetuating. Forgive. You have to forgive. You've got to let it go. Very, very difficult. Very, very hard. How many of you know Annie Kirkwood? We were talking about the New Earth, and she said she had this vision of the Earth as a solid ball. Then she saw it begin to separate and move apart the way a cell does when it begins to, to separate and reproduce. Pulling apart with like a cell, until it broke apart into two Earths. Over here, she heard them saying, we did it, we did it, we did it. Over here, she heard them say, poor thing, she died, believing all of that. So see, the one will not be aware of the other. And that's what they mean by those left behind, will not even be aware that anything has happened. The old Earth is still there, vibrating at this lower frequency with all these terrible things happening to it. But the other Earth moves into the new dimensions, vibrating so fast it becomes invisible. So they are not aware anything has ever happened.